Number 1. Antigens are how the immune system is able to provide specific immunity. The topic of immune specificity was covered in the previous video on the immune system on this channel. Not previously discussed is the crucial role of antigens in the specificity of the immune system. Antigens are proteins that are displayed on the outside of cells. All nucleated cells in the human body present antigens on the outside of their cell membranes. For a cell to be able to present antigen, the antigen is first produced inside of the cell. Then, while still inside of the cell, the antigen is loaded onto another protein known as MHC1. The MHC1 is then able to make its way to the cell membrane, and while a portion of the MHC1 stays inside the cell, the portion of the MHC1 that holds the antigen extends to the outside of the cell. The MHC1 allows the antigen to be presented on the outside of the cell. When there is no disease present, this is a healthy, normal antigen. However, if a viral infection has occurred, the antigen is a viral antigen. Additionally, some cells are able to present viral antigen on MHC2. MHC2 will be discussed later in this video. The immune system is able to distinguish between a healthy cell and a virally infected cell because of the antigens the cells present. In order to understand how antigens are part of vaccination, it is necessary to understand how cells are able to produce proteins, such as antigens. Number 2. Protein synthesis consists of two parts, transcription and translation. The production of new proteins inside of a cell is referred to as protein synthesis and occurs in the cytoplasm. Transcription is the first step in protein synthesis. For proteins to be made properly, the genetic code for how to build the protein must be followed. DNA contains the genetic code to build the proteins of the cells. However, DNA is located in the nucleus, not the cytoplasm. Considering the code to build proteins is located in the nucleus, yet protein synthesis occurs in the cytoplasm, the question arises, how are proteins able to be built in accordance with the genetic code? Transcription is how the cell is able to solve this problem. When a protein is to be built, the first step is to express the genes for the protein. This means the genes, which are the parts of the DNA that code for the protein, become exposed and copied. When a gene is copied, the copy consists of a single-stranded mRNA, not double-stranded DNA. The process of copying a gene and producing single-stranded mRNA is transcription. The single strand of mRNA then leaves the nucleus and arrives in the cytoplasm. Thus, transcription of a gene allows the protein to be built in the cytoplasm, even though the genes for the protein are contained in the nucleus. The protein is synthesized during the step of translation. Proteins are made of amino acids. While different proteins take on numerous different shapes and can be large or small, all proteins start out as a single chain of amino acids. Inserting the wrong amino acids or too few amino acids would mean incorrectly building a protein, which can have disastrous consequences on the functions of the cell. This is why it is so important to ensure the genetic code to build the protein is followed. This is the very problem that translation solves. The mRNA contains the code of which amino acids are to be used and what order they are to go in when building the protein. During translation, mRNA binds with ribosomes. The ribosomes allow for amino acids to be added together in a chain only by following the code provided by the mRNA. Thus. Translating the mRNA ensures the amino acids build the protein in accordance with the genetic code for the protein. To review, transcription is the process of copying the code to build a protein so the code can be present in the cytoplasm. This is accomplished by producing an mRNA copy of the genes for the protein. Translation is the process of translating the mRNA making sure the amino acids joining together to build the protein follow the genetic code for which amino acids and in which order the amino acids should join together to build the protein. Number 3. Viruses contain genes, but are not alive. Viruses are made of DNA or RNA that is contained inside of a protein shell. Additionally, 
some viruses have membranes around their protein shells. Considering there is little else inside of a virus, viruses are not cells and are not alive. If viruses are not cells, the question may arise, how are the proteins the viral DNA and RNA codes for ever to be produced? The answer is the virus requires a host cell to produce the proteins the genes of the virus code for. When a virus infects a cell, spike proteins protruding from the virus can attach to the outside of the cell. Eventually, the virus enters the cell, and the genetic material inside of the protein shell of the virus is released inside the host cell. The DNA from the virus is then able to integrate into the host cell DNA. What this means is that the DNA of the cell receives DNA from the virus, as if the DNA of the virus were now a part of the DNA of the cell. In the case of RNA viruses, the RNA is turned into DNA by an enzyme of the virus known as reverse transcriptase. After this step, the newly synthesized DNA then integrates with the host cell DNA, just as is the case with DNA viruses. When the viral DNA has integrated with the host cell DNA, it is now possible for the genes from the virus to be expressed. Since viruses don't contain all the necessary components to produce proteins, such as ribosomes and a large supply of amino acids, it is the host cell that produces the viral proteins. When the genes of the virus are expressed, it is the host cell that produces the mRNA of the viral gene, and it is the host cell's ribosomes and amino acids that build the proteins of the virus. The genes the virus codes for are mostly genes to produce new copies of the virus. Thus, after infecting a host cell, the virus is able to produce more copies of itself. This includes the DNA or RNA and the protein shell of the virus. However, as this process is repeated, many new viruses are produced, and then more and more copies of the virus are produced until the cell ruptures and dies. However, one protein the virus codes for is the viral antigen. Thus, the reason a cell infected with the virus is able to change from having a healthy, normal antigen to an antigen indicating viral infection is because of the production of the viral antigen. When the viral antigen is loaded onto MHC1 and presented on the outside of the cell, the immune system is alerted that the cell is infected with a virus, and the cell is killed by the immune system. Each virus has its own specific antigen which is why the immune response is specific to one type of virus. If the immune response is swift enough, the infected cell can be killed before very many copies of the virus can be produced. If you liked this video, please subscribe to our channel to see more. Thanks for watching.